Well, hey everybody. I've been sick for uh, the past six weeks or so. And that time I felt really boring in this time. And I also had enough time to buy bullshit. <laughs> But um, what I also bought in that time is an upgrade kit for uh, the uh, Mark 3S to the Mark 4S. And before you ask if I want to do some hilarious mods with my, with my Pruta Mini here, um, no, I don't feel bad about that. Um, this is for, just for the Mark 3S. Um, it's sitting here on the floor. <laughs> Does it fit on the screen here? Yeah. So I recently bought on the flea market for 240 euros a original Prusa Mark 3S. And when I got it, it was really cool for me. It has a bit of bigger build volume, it has a like bar here on top as a modification, which I really like. <laughs> and, and it started pretty good, yeah. It did okay prints, yeah. And I have some prints here and one uh, a little Benji, but what you definitely have to do on a new printer is a Benji. Yeah, if the camera would focus on that and the downside of it, it has a bit of stringing. And I think it's because the filament I was using is a little bit very old. <laughs> and but it printed for me good. And I wanted to print even more things with it, also an ABS print on it, but then the problems began. It has a problem originally with the heat bed that for whatever reason the heat bed temp uh, fixed error occurred on the screen and it was an indicator that something with the heat bed was wrong. And I checked a little bit and I came to the conclusion that the ANZ Rambo board here on the uh, back side had a problem. So, I just swapped it out to check if maybe something was wrong or anything, I don't know. So I just swapped it to see what what it, what it does. <laughs> and with the answer that is uh, currently inside of it, um, the self-test uh, did work, but there were two downsides. The first thing is that the uh, language on uh, the screen didn't uh, appear in German no big deal. Yeah, I can also do with English text. But the big problem for me then was the, it, that the uh, board, the Rambo board here, it couldn't read the SD card. Which is for the printer a, a little bit um, weird. So I sat there and talked, should I put a other board inside or buy a new board from uh, Prusa? and also uh, swap out the uh, extruder mount here or should I just skip all of that and just buy the uh, upgrade kit that I have here and well why the heck not upgrade the printer. <laughs> it is an upgrade that is officially from Prusa that no other manufacturer here on the planet does and this is just really cool. With all that said I'm trying to uh, give you some impressions of that of upgrading this old printer, as you could say, to the uh, latest uh, one. So, then let's take a look at that. So, here you can see the Mark 3S that I have. As of right now, it looks good. And according to the motherboards, the printer probably didn't print that many hours. And here you can also see this Bontech extruder here, which caused me problems. Ah, uh, yes, the Mark 3S. Still a crazy printer. Let's take a look quickly in the box that came. First of all, we have the delicious, terrible beers from Germany, <laughs> which should still stay, according to the instructions, sealed. We also have small things, the new motors, lots of printer parts and other plastic parts where I actually thought I had to print them myself, and another box with screw, nuts, screws, motherboards, nuts and screws. <laughs> but all things have an end. I'll mentally prepare myself to disassemble this uh, printer. And here you see that I uh, first wipe the metal rods to get the remaining fat down there. And then it's time to let go of the printer. I just want to apologize here that I can only show you time lapse videos. Because first of all this is a new uh, process for me building a 3D printer. 
Secondly, it is a, already a small challenge for me building this thing with half my arm. And I was two days busy building this printer, which I definitely always hate. And it doesn't matter if it's a printer, a game console, etc. I hate this cable clutter. And don't get me started on cable management. This is also a thing I don't like. <laughs> But thanks to the good Prusa instructions, I was able to quickly disassemble the Mark 3S. I still find it a bit brutal that almost the entire printer has to be disassembled for this upgrade. And here you can see the parts that will then be used for the new Mark 4S. Then I started with the frame, according to the instructions. To be more precise, the housing for the X-Body motherboard, the Y-Belt idler and the Y-Motor. Where I had problems with the motherboard housing were these M3NE holders, which almost brought me to white heat. <laughs> But somehow I got it in. The motherboard then also simply went in. I had to do the X carriage off camera because both my camera and my phone had no battery in the meantime. But this was a process, it was a bit tricky and I need peace doing it. <laughs> Then I was able to connect the X axis to the Z axis, which I found relatively easy. So one thing here with the uh, old uh, things here. Um, I was wondered because uh, new ones was in the upgrade kit. Uh, it turns out uh, the old ones are thinner. Because on the Mark IV-S, the new ones, they are thicker. So if you want to try putting uh, old rods uh, inside of it, um, yeah, it uh, doesn't really fit inside it. So now we know. But somehow I got this done. I can then uh, treat myself with some treats. <laughs> I also did the uh, next ruler uh, off camera because this was a, a next ruler and the small parts and so was very tricky for me. And it was now a quarter to 12 where it is also time to go to sleep. It's new day to build this thing. <laughs> Oh, yes, you should do that video myself. <laughs> Here I go ahead and uh, do the cable management to the printer and also do the XLCD assembly on. But I only find some things are 3D printed by the printer and some by injection molding. Like here from the flap from the extruder and here from the uh, XLCD uh, shell. Only the housing of the XLCD looks a bit cheap for me. Maybe it looks better with the LCD and if it's on the printer it's also good. But somehow, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll reprint this again. With the display and the cables attached, the wiring can begin. And that's something I don't like to do. But <laughs> it has to be. But thanks to the instructions, everything is also well described. Where what goes and what you can tighten various cable ties. What I just wondered is why there's a fat grounding cable. Or is it the new guidelines for the CE marking that Prusa must comply with? And even if everything is as in the instructions, I find it a bit messy. But hey, most of the cable clutter is first under the print bed and also behind the mainframe where no one will see this anyway. <laughs> and luckily I have a black power supply where the tangle of cables is not as big as with a silver power supply. <laughs> Then let's get to the heat bed. I did the new wiring of the heat bed off camera because it was not so earth shattering now. Only the, the Mr. cable has to be uh, replaced. And tip from me, if you tinker with the heat uh, bed, do this on a surface that is not magnetic. Which is why I had to get to my dining table here because uh, my undermat here on my uh, office here It is magnetic. <laughs> Then I came to the Y carriage and had to realize that I have not enough screws. A few M3 12 screws were missing to screw the bearing to the Y carriage. I then managed uh, to using a few M3 10 screws. Yes, it is not ideal and I should uh, use the M3 12 screws here. But it holds and I can still attach the longer screws to it if something should be. <laughs> Then I could also attach the uh, belt which was a bit tricky to attach. By the way, I did the uh, 
extension uh, on both the belts uh, off camera with the Prusa Belt uh, web app. Then I was able to fit the conversation connections whereupon the heat bed comes on top. And after that it is only the final polish uh, to attach the Wi-Fi module, the uh, X-Body cover and also the NFC antenna. And then the printer is ready! But one thing still needs to be done before we test the printer. And admittedly the foil of the display must be off. Ah, sounds good. <laughs> At least I'm very excited to turn it on. And also to see if everything works after all that I did to it. And the printer starts, which is looking great. The installation assistant has started to check everything and whether I have uh, mounted everything co correctly. The fans are at least already in order. Both the z-axis and the y-axis work perfectly. What does the x-axis do? Trying to get more to the left. Should I set a fax uh, that it doesn't go any further? <laughs> but the printer has found that there is some problem with the x-axis. Unfortunately uh, he could not tell me uh, more precise. I then looked uh, for the error of camera and found that the belt was a bit too tight and one bearing bracket looked out about 1 to 2 millimeters too far. Yes, I'm talking about millimeters and the printer noticed that. <laughs> I think that's why he couldn't tell me anything more precisely. But hey, it's fixed. <laughs> First in the setup the printer wants the load cell to be tested where you have to tap the nozzle. The printer tells you not to panic that it is hot. It is cold. I tap the nozzle and it's also tested and the printer is ready for use. And we must do a test with a Benji. So I'll select the file on the stick and loaded the Prusament Pineapple Yellow PLA filament and simply tap print. <laughs> the heating went very fast and the measurement of the uh, Z distance he did fully automatically. The only thing that was in the middle of the print he complained that the filament uh, gets stuck. But that can be my fault because the filament somehow got tangled on the coil. <laughs> and the bench here also looks great. Except for a slight layer shift which I think is because the printer interrupted while printing. So now I have printed a lot with the Prusa Mark IV-S here. And I find the print quality of it really fantastic. I also uh, managed to uh, get the uh, light bar that the uh, Mark III S here had to uh, go on top of this printer. And I printed it with a uh, Prusament PLA Galaxy Black here if you are interested. It looks really cool this light bar. <laughs> if I think after that uh, I put a link in the description where you can find the printables files on uh, printables to also print this to yourself. But I printed uh, this uh, Zelda Triforce here and the print quality of that is amazing. And I also did another uh, Benji, um, also not with the uh, Christmas hat here, <laughs> um, just this Benji and the print quality looks really cool. Um, you see a few uh, close-up shots of it to really see the print quality of it. The only thing that is to this uh, boat here, the um, floor on that uh, Benji looks a bit rough for me, but hey, this print was finished in 14 minutes. And yes, I'm talking about minutes, not hours. <laughs> Although this Christmas hat I didn't print it here on the Mark IV S. I have a Prusa Mini here where I printed the hat of it. <laughs> but what do I think about this uh, Prusa Mark III S to Mark IV S upgrade? And should you also get one? Well. I would say it depends. If you have a fully functional and perfectly working Mark III or Mark III S or Mark III S Plus, they are already pretty satisfied about it, I wouldn't really recommend this upgrade to you. Sure, it has faster print speed, it has the 32 bit architecture, it has the Wi Fi module, you don't have to do the life just. just <laughs> You don't have to do uh, the Life Adjust Z on it, but you can also look at the other upgrades that are available like the Mark 3.9S upgrade or the Mark 3.5S upgrade. 
and both the upgrades Mark 3.9s or Mark 3.5s upgrade, they are bring you a bit closer to a full Mark 4s here. And also the thing is the complete upgrade kit that I have here worth 639 euros. The 639 euro upgrade kit is uh, also when you have the heat bed which is uh, screwed in and not soldered and if you have the black power supply. But for that price I think you can all also uh, save up 200 euros more to buy a build your own uh, kit for the complete Mark 4S. And with that you still have your Mark 3 there for a backup or anything else you would do. <laughs> but when your Mark 3 has some problems like with the extruder or anything like mine here, <laughs> but the 639 euro upgrade kit to the complete Mark 4S, they are I think pretty worth it. And with the 639 euros you are basically getting a whole new printer. Well, except for the uh, frame and the uh, power supply here. <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> and before anybody uh, says in the comments that I paid too much for this Mark 4S, or when some of you write, eh, you should bought a bamboo lap here. Well, calm down here. This is all right. <laughs> well, I was able to uh, get a bamboo lap A1 mini now with this end of year sale uh, action uh, going on the website. And I have a Bamboo Lab A1 Mini uh, on the way here. I will review the uh, Bamboo Lab A1 Mini here on this channel when it arrives here and I, try, uh, or I will try to review it as neutral as possible. So if you are interested in this video you can leave a subscribe down there to uh, see this video then. But uh, the upgrade uh, kit here for the Mark 4S it is really awesome that a company uh, are doing these upgrades uh, or are uh, giving out these upgrades to customers to get the old printer to the new platform like I did now here. It is really really awesome. No but um, I will let the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini here uh, compete with my Prusa Mini that I have here. So if you are interested in this video leave a subscribe down there and also if you are interested in uh, other videos, uh, tech stuff, computer stuff, game console stuff, you can leave a subscribe down there. And otherwise it was for me and then we see us in the next video. <laughs>